cool, he cool, he cool. Hey, thanks for picking up this video and being like, I'll give it a watch. My voice is already annoying, so you're probably like, oh, fuck this, I'm out. But don't be out. Wait. Let me reel you in. So this is quite literally just me hanging out with a friend talking about, we were supposed to be talking about Avatar, The Last Airbender, and The Legend of Korra, which that, that, that video is coming. If it isn't already up by the time you're seeing this. But there's going to be this weird ass shift in conversation topic very early on within the first five minutes. We're not going to fucking talk about Avatar. You know that based on the thumbnail and the video title and everything. I just want you to understand that we're going to, it starts out talking about Avatar and then very quickly changes gears and then does not get back on track. And I just want to like clarify that. So like, yes, I, I, I got sidetracked for the rest of the video and we will get back on topic in another video altogether. So again, please don't leave. Thank you. Bye. Do a little refresher. Yeah. Yeah. You probably should have. Also, that was a weird way to weird place for me to start the, uh, the video. This is going to be a terrible, uh, it's going to be terrible content. Like, super duper terrible. Um, What's new? Right? So, I'm not quite sure what I've labeled this yet. But the only reason I am, like, uh, I wanted to do this, otherwise we could have just had a conversation about it. Because Avatar is a well-received show. It's a very well received product in general. Uh, it you know it came out in the early two thousands. Was it two thousand? So the Avatar started in 04? What happened? What year did Avatar start? Oh four. Oh five. Oh five, and it ended in oh seven. Eight. Wow. Okay. Cool. So well, that's 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 the big difference, right? So Avatar got a full fleshed out three seasons over the course of three years you know so people had more time to live with that meanwhile you already know the story of how right. Korra ended yeah so pardon me while I eat I didn't watch Avatar growing up me and him are the same age I just wasn't into it I don't know why I wasn't into it, but I wasn't into it. But I know that he loves Avatar. So I decided to finally watch it for him so that we could discuss it. Because apparently when he asks people to watch the show he likes, people tend to not do it. Is that right? Is that a, is that a, is that a very, 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 yeah, very nice. Here's the thing. His track record with recommending me shows currently is impeccable. Now I don't really, know. If I don't. I don't really think there's one that I've suggested that you were just like, nope. Nope. There hasn't been a single show that you've been like, hey, you should check this out. And I was like, I didn't like it. And I would like to clarify, I didn't say I didn't like Baby Reindeer. I liked Baby Reindeer, and I hate myself yeah. for liking that show as much as I did. Because I liked it for all the wrong reasons. No, I I felt like your your reasoning behind downgrading it was silly. Yeah, that's fine. That's my opinion, and it's you know it's it's only valid to me. It only means anything to me. Like I did, but I do feel like shows that uh, and it's weird because as I, <clears throat> because we had that conversation about Baby Reindeer not being true to its, its the show is not true to its uh, real life counterpart. Like it makes it's... other things that are. No, no, no. So it's not a hundred percent accurate. Yeah, but there and is no accuracy in the story. Yeah, things happen. But here's the thing, and this is important to me. Like with it, this is why I formed the opinion I, I formed. Most oh man, listen to me. This is important, not you. You already know about about what I'm about to say. But if anybody anybody listening, this is real. Most people forget to clip the microphone onto their shirt before they start recording a fucking podcast. I'm not one of those people. Sure you're not. Um, 
when you look at any biopic, whether it be Ray, Get On Up, or Straight Outta Compton, or Too Legit to Quit, the MC Hammer story, or whatever that Michael Jackson uh, bi- bi- movie was with Flax Alexander, which we never talk about. Um, and we should. <clears throat> we don't discuss... People watch those and they assume everything that happened in them are like the story is told accurately. That's what viewers usually assume. They don't assume that they took a person's life and made a movie out of it. They assume they told this person's life in a movie. And I think it's important, like, and if you don't believe that, when Monster, when the Jeffrey Dahmer story came out, the Netflix miniseries came out, People genuinely, like, were upset at, like, the police department and how that that, that case was handled based on what happened in the show. And then we only to find out that, like, that's not how it went down. The the character that uh, Niecy Nash played, like, she existed, but she was not as integral to the story in real life. She did not live in his apartment complex. The story is just straight up like it's it's manufactured to be more interesting. Simply put. Same goes for Baby Reindeer. Now we are gonna get back to Avatar here in a hot second. But I am like saying like but we, we I mean, already started moving. Good God. <laughs> but I am but I I just wanted to like cause because we had a discourse over this and he made me and he made me sad, and I didn't like it. So, there were a couple of things about Baby Reindeer I, I thought were very annoying. I did not like that we ended up focusing on, on focusing on Martha more than anybody else. I felt Martha was criminal in her actions. But I felt that that, that TV producer guy, I felt that he was a genuine bona fide monster. And we just kind of glossed over what he did. I didn't like that. Like, but that's not as entertaining. But it, a part of me feels like the ooh. I'm, I'm gonna say some shit. It feels like we focused on Martha because she's a woman, and I feel like, like vilifying her, and almost forgiving the other guy, is just like ah, you know. But this woman. Like it felt like it was an attack on her for being a female, and I don't, and I doubt that was the case. I hope that wasn't the case. So, I feel like at least going towards the end, she wasn't fully vilified because there were. Oh well, I mean, at like, the end, he wanted it. Oh my god, I can't tell you when he fucked her in his head. I thought that was legit, and I was like, you know what, man? Yeah, I kind of. Mm-hmm, go ahead, get it. And I was... He wanted it. Pause. Oh, God. Pause. This happened to a real person? Yeah, yeah. But when she first came into the pub, my initial thought was, damn, look at that wagon she dragging. <laughs> Girl got an ass on her. And I do think that the actress who portrayed her well, it's kind of cute, but that was kind of the point. The real life Martha doesn't doesn't, doesn't look that different from her, but it just could be because she's white and I, I'm kind of like no, uh, I'm blind to white faces for the most part. Um, but no, that was like the one thing like, toward the end of the show. I was like, I don't like this at all. Like this dude was, you were full on raped. Fuck all that because I don't want to oh, dwell on this, huh? Yeah, that was the wild part. And like, it almost feels like the show pleads a case for I was asking for it. Because, well, I mean, that's kind of like the the victim mentality after that situation. Yeah, the victim mentality as we know it, like in, in Trump's sense. But like what actually happens from people who have been assaulted and it's something that he 
would have actually felt after that situation, which is why, like, after it happened and he realized that he was attracted to a trans woman, then he started to question everything. But then what I, what I meant was, well, what I was getting at is they did a good, it made it feel like it was trying to justify the whole, well, sometimes you do put yourself in these situations. And again, I agree. Like sometimes you can't put yourself in a situation where bad things happen to you. Like to say that that's not true is something Mark would say. And he needs to be slapped for thinking that. He ain't here. So that's his fault. But no, I don't I, I do agree that you can be responsible for things like this. But he very much was groomed into the situation he was in. It's like somebody saw that he was a desperate uh wannabe writer slash actor. And they pulled him into this situation. Now, I don't know if he actively was taking drug, the drugs he claimed he was uh, taking in that video. Like the fake video in the show. Like, I don't know if he was actually smoking crack and all these other things with this guy. But yeah, you could argue that, well, you know, your willingness to do all this, blah, 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 blah. No, when it came down to it, like, I think most men would have never gone back after the first time he penetrated him while he was still awake. And I feel like most people would like feel like, yeah, I'm like, and I think a lot of women probably wouldn't have went back. But See, I we say that, but then how do we end up with people like freaking uh, Weinstein? Yeah, but and I think mean, Weinstein. Right I know, hold on. And I'm not, uh, hoes exist. Let's get that straight. Some people like to fuck. Some people don't, Mark would agree to this. Some people don't value sex the same way the rest of us. A lot of people don't value their bodies the way a lot of people value their bodies. Some people are 100% willing to um to put their body on like on the on the table for a trade. And I think the people who take advantage of that misconstrue that with being a common thought. Like, well, yeah, people who want to do this, want to get in this business are willing to give me this thing I want. That's not the case. The people who gave you the thing you wanted also wanted to get into the business. There were, it was two completely separate things. And that's why you get people like that guy in the show. And cause I, there's no way the guy in, like, like he was like the first person he had done that to. I refuse to believe no. like, like you've done this before. Like the, the plan, the plan was too solid. Yeah. Like nigga, you, you fucking, you did this to this, to this man very much intentionally. Like you became his friend. You saw what he wanted. You found a way to give it. You, 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 you made him envision him having it through you and he was willing to do whatever and like i very clearly like like uh quickly like pieced together that like he never wanted you to make this tv show he just wanted to fuck like when you came in with the script and he was very much like nah like you know you want to get high it was like yeah yeah like, okay and like and, and then you could argue that like a part of him liked what was happening because he, you know, he didn't. When it came to Keely, he was willing to like leave her behind to go be with this man. It was at, at a certain point. I think it was no longer about. Uh, I think it was no longer about his career. And I think it really did just like slowly become about the feeling he was getting because he liked it. Because like he said, even after he had been like, Full on assaulted. He uh he stayed there for two days. And like and I I like I imagine that like a lot of people who go through that, it's not like, well, why did you stay? Because they were looking for answers. They were trying to like come to grips with what happened. And it's way easier to like acknowledge what's going on to you in the place where it's happening. Because like it feels like you're, you're you're more connected to it, and like the answers like right around the corner. So I don't feel like him staying was proof that well he wanted it. I I understood that. And like when it came down to it, I don't know if it's and like it's not because of my man, but I really did feel like at the end of the show when he goes back to that guy's house, I genuinely thought he was gonna punch him in the fucking face. Cause. Without question, that man ruined your life. 
No questions asked. Like you and Keely were doing fairly okay until that dude came into the picture. Like you were. Your relationship fell apart because of what he did to you. She like you she couldn't touch you because of how you felt after finding out you were violated. So I genuinely thought he was gonna punch that dude in the face. And that dude opens the door and is like, oh, where have you been? Like, you didn't do this to this man? I hated him. I have not been assaulted. But I did. I hated him. And I hated that he went in there and he had this conversation with him. I hated the whole, like, you should work with me. I hated it. I did. Like, it made me angry. Like, I wanted him to, like, have to, like, deal with what he did. And it didn't make me hate the show. Because I still loved the show. Like, outside of his aspect of it, like, the whole Martha part, I it, they did a, such a good job of writing her character. Because I went from liking Martha to feeling bad for Martha to kind of wanting to have a Martha to being like, we need to put Martha in prison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I went from liking Martha to, like, oh, Martha. <laughs> to Martha. <laughs> to Martha. <laughs> and then, oh, Martha. That, that, that was really weird. Really, really. Because it was like, in the beginning, she was cool. But then she started to get crazy. But then when she was recording all the conversations, I was impressed. But then when it started to devolve, I was like, oh, no. So many emotions with Mark. But I feel like the way, the, the reason it was written, the way it was written, was because he went through, which is crazy to think of, but this one person went through these very real two set trip instances of trauma. And one of them was very, very, very painful and probably hard to make the focal point of um, the show. I thought you were trying and to be funny other. for a second. I really thought you were trying to be huh? funny for a second. <laughs> the other um, was, in his own words, he was telling, because of uh, his own actual ridiculous uh, encounter with police when he was trying to report it. Yeah. And they basically, like, they practically laughed at him. And so he balanced the actual tragedy with the comedy in that situation, because the tragedy is a lot. Mm -hmm. That would be a lot to handle if that was the focal point of the show. And by no means is the show considered a freaking comedy. Like, it's it just is. a straight-up drama. No. It's listed as a dark comedy. I did not understand oh, yeah. that. I did not understand that. Well, maybe he, find, maybe he finds it funny at this point now. Maybe he can laugh at it now. But I do, I, I feel like the, the reason he, it was written, not to mention, like, um, it, before it was a TV show, he actually turned it into a one-man stage show that he performed. And somebody saw it and was like, hey, you should, you should think about, like, developing this. And so he did. And I'm sure he had plenty of input over the amount of time it took to develop. And they were like, okay, you need to lighten this up just a little bit. Yeah, it, it 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 borderline don't like hard to. It, 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 it borderline don't hard to watch. But I I like blasted through it in one day. So. Yeah, so do I. So so do I. So did I. I finished it all in one city. Which is wild because had it been a movie, we'd have been like, ugh. I mean, I probably would have taken breaks, but yeah. if it was if it was the same story, like if it was like literally all the same, just in one file, uh, it would it would have kept me pulled in. Yeah, probably same with me. 
Um, oh, so the other thing about that show that I fucking hated, it also has to do with the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, I think the second assault scene. And I just want y'all to know, I am about to make light of sexual assault. And Trigger warning. And ain't nothing you can do to stop me. Um, so there's a scene where he's talking about, like, you know, he had woken up after, after the dude had blown him, basically, for the first time. And, like, he was, like, his, uh, his disgusting congealed saliva was still on his crotch or whatever. Oh, yes, I remember that. And, like, and, like, they put a sound effect in when he went to grab his penis that it sounded, like, really squishy. That was the part that I was like, dude, you ain't shit. You ain't shit. You ain't <laughs> shit, motherfucker. You raggedy, ain't shit, raggedy, fucking dick wipe. Like, you could have wiped my dick off. Like, you could have. You could have finished slobbing my knob. With me. Without me, you ever even know. Like, my dude. Like, you could have went and got some warm water or a baby wipe or something. Warm water. Don't use baby wipes because then they'll smell it and know something's up. You could have wiped my dick off. Like, you left your gnarled spit and my... Because cum stays gooey for a while. Bet y'all didn't expect to hear that. Mm. Yeah, nut stays gooey for a good minute. So, and like, I refuse to believe that you didn't feel out and realize your dick was wet before you went to go take a piss. Because I'm pretty sure I'd have noticed that, like, yeah, my my entire crotchular area is... Why is it cold down there? Soggy. <laughs> like, it's soggy. Oh, why am I... What is happening? Why like, I... Like, why am I... Like, imagine, like, if he was, like, a, uh, like, a, like, an urban person. Uh, a southern urban person. I gotta imagine him saying that as he goes to the bathroom out loud. Why my dick wet? <laughs> What'd you do to my dick? Ugh. Is this your it's fucking time. spit? I'm back in your class. Um, is this your spit on my dick? <laughs> That's terrible. Why would you say that? Why your breath smell You're like this? Person. You got gingivitis on my balls. Ugh! I need some Irish spring to get this off. Help. Please help me. I'm, I'm not funny. I'm not funny. I'm gonna stop. I hate myself. And I hate everybody involved. Um, that's it. I just wanted to clarify... That I didn't just like the show. And I knew ahead of time that, like, there was some inc- inconsistencies in the story. But I only, like, no- noticed how bad it got because the lady who. Basically, the real Martha Scott is suing Netflix for defamation. Yeah, but defamation lawsuits are not always successful. Not to mention, no, I don't mean that. Like, if you, like, if you were Martha and watching this, although part of me, when when reading about like the stuff that she was saying and how she was like, he's the one who's obsessed with me. Look at this; he's turned it all into. I was like, mm. no, you do sound a little bit off, just a little bit. Because he never said her name. I don't even know if he's ever actually come out and admitted that that lady was the person that it was about. I don't even know if he's ever confirmed that. So, for all we know, she could actually be crazy and just lying. Yeah, but let's be real. It's her. And he made that shit up. (laughs) Oh, that's good. Oh, that's really good. So, yeah, that's my take on Baby Reindeer. Great show. And I feel like, and I did, I didn't walk away from it being sad. Like, oh my God. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I can't believe this uh-huh, happened to this man. Poor him. He's a sweet little baby you know, person. I, I ended the show, like, 
fucking laughing. <laughs> like, the second he walks into the bar and gets that drink, I was like, oh, that's great. Yeah, that was a great way to end it. And that's how you know it's partly fictionalized. Because clearly that's not what happened. He went on to make a TV show and win multiple Emmys for it. But I do feel like I understood his feelings of inadequacy and like wanting to be like he wanted somebody like Martha in his life. Like he did. I understood. I genuinely did. And a large part of me was like, yeah, I get it, man. Holding on to those old voicemails. Like, literally having a way to relive the better part of this abuse. And, like, honestly, I think Martha could have, like, still to this day been abusing this motherfucker had she not involved his parents and, like, everybody else in his life. And the fact that this bitch was literally typing sent from my iPhone at the end of every email. Who daddy? She was the type of crazy that you don't really recover from. And they never did explain how, like, what did she do for a living? Because she had a house. Uh, portions of house. Sentences. Because that's like a conference of house. <laughs> Could you shut the fuck up, please? Like, if at all possible, commence to shutting the fuck up. <laughs> so, but no, nah, that, like, that, yeah, the, the apartment she was in. Ugh. And it was weird how, like, yeah, she couldn't fucking spell. I don't think she couldn't spell. Like, a part of me really started to think that, like, she just had a fucked up keyboard. Like, that's what I started to think at first for a while. It's like the keyboard on her laptop was just. Was real, but like yeah, she oh that girl was clearly fucking like mentally un mentally unstable, and she sexually assaulted him, and he didn't say shit about that. He never said shit about that. He never said yeah she she jacked my dick off. I was out here by the water and she was just like she was row rowing her boat. <laughs> And I ain't gonna front like Mar Martha. I'm gonna be real with you. I was I was down for him giving you the the rug burn until you sent the, until you left that provocative image in his bedroom, and I saw what you look like with your clothes off, and I was like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. I'm like, yes, I realize, I realize that's a real human. That's what she really looks like. But let's be real, like, homegirl had a spare tire and. She was wearing them granny panties, and I like fat bitches. She was not wearing anything that was provocative. She wasn't even wearing a matching bra and panty set, which is not something I expect every woman to have. But then again, like, I about to say, I don't wear a bra. I don't really, like, my, my tank top don't match my drawers either, so, eh, whatever. But she was wearing some, some dime store shit. I was like, ugh. Martha, this ain't sexy, baby. Like, this ain't sexy at all. And this bitch was like, she's like, ah, she splashed something in my eyes. I thought it was, I thought it was going to go blind. Was it like Diet Coke? I don't know, Donnie. I didn't stop to check the sugar content. And it was at that point I walked out the kitchen. I was like, fuck you. What? Like, you couldn't fucking smell it? <laughs> like, it didn't get in your mouth at all. Like, all right, mm. There was a lot of times that Donnie, like, genuinely, like, fucking, uh, like, it, like, suffered people that he shouldn't have suffered. Like, he really shouldn't have. 
Like those people that worked in the bar with him, fuck them. Those people who gave him a place to stay, yeah, I realize they gave him a place to stay. Fuck them. And the fact that like he kind of like had that little like that minor celebrity hood. Goddamn, that chicken looked just, the, just that chicken looks delicious. Popeye's got some crazy looking chicken. Uh, pop that, pop it, a chop, chop. Um, but uh, like now the people that you was like there, they would nah, that suck. Like they were throwing parties every night. Like you would come in, like ah, uh, I realized it wasn't your room. But still, and I I really hope that that wasn't true. Like, oh, no, I made that part up. Like, okay, good. You had your little bit of celebrity, and then you went back there? The fuck? And then you was like, yeah, it turns out my dad got sexually assaulted, too. What? That's crazy. But yeah, um, I think that's all. This wasn't very interesting to anybody but us. But hey, the majority of the internet's content is content. So apparently a lot of the messages that she sent him on the show were the actual messages that real Martha sent him. That's marvelous. Um, like, cause in, like, in the lost or whatever, he's filed, like, uh, like he sent me like voicemails and emails. Like he's kept them. But apparently the and this is literally from just a few hours ago. The judge said that she can sue them for defamation, but that's it. Because she had a bunch of other stuff on there too. And he said the only, the only, I guess the only reason she can still sue them for defamation is because even that, even though they knew that he fictionalized some of the, uh, the stuff, uh, Netflix still included in the beginning, this is a true story. Hmm. But you know, the wild part is Fargo proves like even the original movie that putting this is a true story at the beginning of a thing doesn't make it doesn't mean anything because every episode of Fargo starts off with this is a true story every episode of the show oh so Pierce Morgan was the one who interviewed her and he gave his opinion in an interview as well and he says, I'd say Fiona Harvey lied to me quite a lot in the interview. And if her threatened legal action against Netflix and Gad goes ahead, I suspect it will, it will quickly emerge. She did send all the emails, messages, and letters to him. But that doesn't mean she can't be a victim here, too. I think that, like, they... Wait, wait, wait. wait. He said, um... There were moments in the interview where my suspicious alarm bells rang loud, especially when she suddenly said, even if the email thing was true, the rest is not. Yeah, but sweetheart, the stuff in the emails was <laughs> atrocious. <laughs> You said some things, Martha. Like, you said some things. Her name's not Martha. I know. I don't know your real name, and I don't really care to, because you're a sexual you're a sexual assaulter, and I don't like people like that. Oh, Even... she is out for money. Apparently, she, she complained about how much they paid her to do the interview with Pierce Morgan. How much did they pay her to do the interview with Pierce Morgan? $250. And she said, and I asked if that was what they paid everyone, and if so, I wanted to see documentation to that effect. You said two hundred and fifty dollars. Yes. Bitch, you could have stayed at home. Her, she said, I w- I'd settle for a million. 
That's why I think people really need to like. Oh, he said that Pierce Morgan threatened her on set too. Apparently, he didn't even say goodbye and only got the photograph taken with me because he needed it for publicity. Oh God, she's an attention seeker. No shit, you bro. She's like, well, yeah, she very happily volunteered herself. And he said, no, she's not going to get a million. What she wants is an agent. <laughs> Who do you think you are to be demanding a million pounds? That's what I was about to say. Oh, that she wanted that for the interview. But calm down. Yes. I'm not connected to the show. Like her lawsuit against Netflix is a hundred and seventy million dollars. Look, I think people as a whole like misunderstand how much money a million dollars is. You don't need a million dollars to be happy. Like to be well taken care of after going through some like hard times. Like a quarter of a million is a lot, but like you can burn through it. Like five hundred thousand dollars is more than enough if you know how to live properly if you don't if you ain't out here just blowing your money but you live modestly you can live off that five hundred thousand for a very long time and you can do shit for fun if you want a million you're only wanting a million because you know they made a lot of money from the show that's it and the and, crazy thing is that the people who made this show probably made practically nothing because Netflix does not pay their actors well. Unless you're in like a juggernaut, you're getting paid crumbs. Crumbs. Y'all, did y'all hear that man? He works in Hollywood. He know? He the one signed the check. Like, you, write, know, you know, um, he write crumbs the umbrella academy. on the check. Shut up. <laughs> the, the Umbrella Academy, so one of the actors did an interview and they asked like how much he made from the show and the show is pretty popular and they got four seasons and he said he made less than a million total uh, across four seasons i want to say that i'm not surprised by that because how the fuck would netflix make money like other than like well we get, yeah subs but like they don't sell like ad space you know, it's not like it's well, they only... have they have the ad version now. Yeah, but like before that, they didn't. What I'm saying is like compared to like cable TV, like TV TV, like the the network gets money based on like on commercials. And if your show is really good, they can charge more for commercials. So like yeah, like the, like Netflix like brings a like does a show in hopes that it's so good it will convince people to like sign up for the subscription. And, like, I'm not saying that that's not going to happen, but I'm just saying, like, oh, y'all really don't realize how, like, we don't we don't value our entertainment like that. Entertainment to us is frivolous and frugal. It's frivolous. Like, we will steal entertainment as best we can. Like, most of us do not, like, get a kick out of paying for entertainment. Like, we don't. This has not been about Avatar. Not going to Nope. Like I have like relabeled the uh the, the title of the video to just straight up be about Baby Reindeer. Which is perfect in five. Yeah. <clears throat> like we might cut if we, we if we get done with this, we'll switch to like we'll probably go do one about Avatar after this, but like so this is this this was supposed to be about I'm gonna cut that the beginning part of that out. Like I'll probably like like put like an opening like to let y'all know like, hey, like this is a true story. Like, yeah, oh my god. I really hope I remember to do that. Oh. But yeah, um, so nobody truly understands Netflix's uh, money-making model 
but what we do know is that they make a lot of money. Not to mention, they are, at this point, a global situation. So they literally have money coming in from all over the world. Yeah. But I would say, like, the idea of, like, oh, I know you made a lot of money making a Netflix show. How do you think I made money from the show? They bought the rights to it. That's it. And like, then you don't get... So, like, you can make movies and you can, like, apply to have them uh, uploaded to Netflix to become a Netflix. Like, you can just straight up... I mean, you can do the same with Amazon. Just like you can publish a book on Amazon Books. Um... But you get zero monies from it. Like, you make nothing from doing that. And then you make slightly more of nothing if you work on one of their TV shows. And the only hope you can have is to stay employed is that it's a, a very popular show because if it doesn't do big numbers, they're going to cancel you after one season, no matter what. It doesn't matter what type of, like, internet support or what niche corner of the internet like your show found if you're not doing massive numbers like baby reindeer did they are going to cancel and i think that people who don't really understand that stuff like i don't like i'm not gonna say no names but like i think a few people we know don't grasp that like that like that's not how business works um like the people who put things together like they're like the people like production companies like it's their jobs, like find the like find the people and do and make the money stuff happen. Writers are just like, like writers and actors for for uh, streaming services don't have the luxury of they don't have the luxury of the thing they're doing makes money for everybody involved because like if you make a movie movie. Like, there's like, well, I get paid this because people will see a movie I'm in, but the company is going to get money if the movie does well at the box office. And if the box office version of the movie does well, then we can probably shop it to different streaming services and they'll pay us to have it on their streaming service because if the movie is that good, it's likely going to get them new subscribers. And then when it's all said and done, we can probably make like a collector's edition Blu-ray or whatever and sell that and make even more money. But if the show in theory or the movie in theory is technically already kind of free, like if you have Amazon Prime, you get Amazon Video. Like if you're paying for DirecTV, you get a, you get Max and you get Paramount Plus. Like Paramount Plus mostly runs ads for things on Paramount Plus. Uh, yeah. Amazon Prime runs Prime Video runs ads for things on Prime Video. Every like Dude, it was so annoying when they started doing ads. Say what? It's it was it was so annoying when they started doing ads. Yeah it is. Cause I told you when I was watching Avatar uh <laughs> that was funny to nobody but me. Um, and I'm okay with that. Uh, I had to sit through, like, between, uh, The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, I sat through the same two ads for the movie If about 75 times. Which is crazy, because that movie came out almost last year. <laughs> And, and like the only other two ads I would see would be like the family that streams together wins together. Like it's it's literally like this the Nick 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 uh Nickelodeon on Paramount Plus. That's it. Those like those are the two ads that would play before every episode of Avatar. And I'm pretty sure it's because I was watching a Nickelodeon show, obviously. But like in, in in like every show on uh Paramount Plus like has a stinger for the network it's on. So like you remember how like on Nickelodeon there would be like basically like a network uh bump like to remind you of what network you were watching. Like yeah, like it had one of those at the beginning of every episode. 
if you were lucky, that was all you got. I mean, it does that on, on Netflix too. <clears throat> it also does that on uh, it does that on uh, it does that on Hulu for FX shows, but on Disney Plus, mm-hmm. it does two of them. I don't know why. I think one is to show like, hey, this is an FX show, and then the second one is like hard coded into the video. So you get two of those, uh, like those FX bumpers, before like watching something from FX on uh, who on Disney Plus. But yeah, that was uh, it was. <clears throat> but but real life Martha, that's what I'm gonna call you. I totally understand that you want to get paid because they got paid because his story only exists with you. Like he didn't have a story to tell if it wasn't for you. Which isn't completely true, but the story does, you know, mostly, like, you know, pertain to you. So I respect your feeling of, like, I want to get broke off a little something, something, too. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. But you ain't mm-hmm. going to get a... Uh, time. And time periods. Because... Huh. Like, it came out, you know, that she wasn't convicted of harassment or, um, well, not harassment, of stalking, and she wasn't, and she didn't go to jail, right? Yeah, yeah, uh uh-huh, yeah. So, that was for, you know, that time period. And the way people looked at men making those kinds of um, reports, I feel like is completely different than it would be looked at today. I feel like if he went to the police with what he had, then it would have been, and, and today, it would have been completely different. It's weird, because I feel, if I'm not mistaken, it only happened like a couple of years ago. Like, it wasn't that long ago. And that's the, that's the even crazier part, is like the same situation. Like, men being allowed to have feelings didn't really happen until <laughs> very recently. Well, like it happened long enough for him to nobody heard a word. Have been able to turn it into a stage show and do it for a while, and then turn it into a script. I also think, like, what you look like as a man, like, uh, defines whether or not you're allowed to do it, because he looks like the kind of person that would have feelings. His beard was also like one of my least favorite parts of the show. No, that's, that's probably the most messed up thing we said. That's wild because I done said some stuff. <laughs> His beard was shit. Like the whole the whole show. The one thing I hated the most is that he never shaved his beard. Like, and I was curious. Okay, so, hold on. In 2019, he mentioned that he had been through two police investigations in his life, and they've both been hilarious, fly on the wall, terrible. Um, so that whole thing, the situation with Martha, with real Martha, at least happened before 2019, so more than five years ago. That's it. I, was, I didn't have nothing. To, I didn't have nothing to add to that. Like, well, I'm still I'm, trying to find see if I, there's not. Like, he will not. Re- he's he releasing. He's releasing like actual zero information. So there's no actual time frame for it. But it was still more than five years ago. <sighs> it's not weird that he's not. You know, releasing information because he made it up. Uh. Because if it's like a real thing, like, wouldn't we be able to look up the, um, wouldn't we be able to look up the, uh, uh, the police report? Like a police report? Uh. 
No, because they wouldn't they wouldn't file anything against her because they didn't believe them. They 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 literally just cited her for harassment and then they tried to cite him for harassing the police because he kept trying to complain about it. That's wild. Could you imagine somebody like like a like you know what? That's not surprising. Because I feel like bullied kids at school get the same response from teachers when it's like, hey, I'm being treated poorly. I don't like it. Would you please stop talking about this? You have to get, you have to grow up and let this go. It's like, bitch, I'm okay, cool. Don't come to school tomorrow. That's all I'm gonna say, bitch. <laughs> that ain't funny. You're a terrible person. How could you joke about that? I didn't say nothing. First off, like that bitch. <clears throat> no, you re- didn't say nothing, but you said a whole lot. Retire that bit. Laughing and then be like, ah, oh, that's not funny. Like, yeah, we get we get it. It was funny. God damn it. You 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 were that kid. You closed the school down twice. Like there's no way to prove that I'm lying. That was funny. Was that a threat, young man? I don't know what you're talking about. You need to stop harassing me. Let this go. How long was that? Can we be done now? Let's go and have it start. Oh no, we can. Like, if, uh, you want you want to want to wrap this bad boy up? Yeah, yeah. So, right. out of uh, five stars, what are we what are we giving Baby Reindeer? What do I give Baby Reindeer out of five stars? Uh, four point seven. Oh dang! It's not perfect, but like again, it. No, tell- you gave it. You gave it higher than I did. <laughs> again, like I said at the start of this, the things I like about it, I'm embarrassed to admit that I like them. Not embarrassed, Which but I'm you not. Never, you never said what they were, so you're good. I'm about to say, what part of embarrassed by it didn't... <laughs> Boy, so I, I wouldn't finna fucking tell nobody that. Hey, this hit it, man. But yeah, um, no, I give it a 4.7. I thought like the, uh, I, did, I did, didn't feel like there were really any plot holes. I did like, uh, I will say this. I, 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 I peeped out that she was typing sent from my iPhone well before like, like before they yeah. admitted it, like before they revealed it, because like the whole like, you know, the sound of a keyboard uh, during the bumpers or whatever, like yeah, like well, obviously, like like why would they do that? Like if it wasn't from her iPhone, yeah, and like her fucking up, like typing, uh, sent from my iPhone was goddamn hilarious. She could have just made it her email signature. Sent from my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm touching me there. So yeah, I'll just say like um, um, mania, mania can do things to people's spelling. I've seen it firsthand. So yeah, I feel bad. I felt bad for her. like as a as a human being on planet Earth. I did feel bad for her. I felt bad for him because I totally understand that. Like I said, like I said earlier. I understand that feeling of needing, like that validation, and like wanting that, that that comforting, like she provided something emotionally that he did not have, or the very least he hadn't had since he lost Kaylee, uh, Keely, and I get it. So yeah, I can give it a four point seven. What you give it? Uh, mine is four point five. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah. So on average, it's a 4.6. Yeah. Sounds like we almost like planned that, but we didn't. We didn't plan this. Nope. All right. Um, mm. This was under an hour. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, it's over. I mean, like, this is just two friends talking. Like you were just a part of... <clears throat> You were basically just eavesdropping on a, a phone call right now. That's what this was. It's not really a podcast, but it's, it's sort of like a podcast. Bye.